Welcome back. I'm uh, sitting here with my very good friend, Con Butianis, um, uh, and this is a continuation from, uh, from our previous video that we just finished a few minutes ago. Um, one of the uh, things that I have spoken about a little bit in some of the videos I've done recently is I love one-liners. I reckon they teach you really well. And one of the one-liners that I love is to know and not to do is not to know. So that means that you need to be able to implement what you learn. And my friend Con here is extremely good at it, in my opinion. So over the years, aside from his proficient skill set in the game or the international football game of soccer, as we call it here in Australia, uh, Con has a very, very good style of getting things implemented. Right, so he'll learn a new technique and he'll implement it. And what I want to talk about a little bit, Con, is yeah. the the practice cycle. What, what is, what the, the, you know, we've spoken about footballers that can't kick both feet. We've spoken about how practice is important in in life, football, business, etc. So what the practice generally is boring. It's a yeah. boring cycle to do anything in a repetition skill is whether it's practicing mathematics, whether it's kicking a soccer ball, whether it's learning your real estate skills, if that's what you do for a living, you know, what, when you get to that point of weakness where you go, I've really had enough of this, I'm just overdoing this, what, what is it that keeps you going? Like, we've spoken about the benefit of having, you know, you, you see that the kids are growing, etc. Yeah. But at your age now, so how old are you now? 40, 44. 44. Yeah. So at 44, for you to be able to still practice your art so proficiently and so routinely, right? And you understand it's a whole life cycle. You know, you, you, you work on running, you work on kicking. You still do all that now and you're yep. not playing the game, but you're teaching the game. Yeah. Right? What is it? How can you keep doing that? So, you know, how long, when did you start playing soccer? What age? I was, you know, two, three years of age. I was kicking okay. the ball around. So 40 years you've been playing the game. Yeah. How do you keep so consistent for that long? How do you, you're implementing what you know and you're learning more things and you, you what I've seen is you're very good at implementing the new things too. Yeah. But what, what is it? You know, you surround yourself with mentors. You know, you and I have done a bit of work together. You do mm. a bit of work with Alan. You've got a few good people around you that are, that are yeah. key and I understand that can help. But what, how, I'm so impressed that you're so consistent with your effort. Uh, look, you can say you're lucky or not. I think my mind's open to new ideas. That's the key area. Right. So if someone suggests something to you, I can't, I'm happy to look at it. Okay. And then you make your own mind up afterwards. Um, I learned most of the things from non-football related people. Right. Which is very, very important. Yeah. I mean, you can tell your viewers this. Most yeah. of the time, people think that you actually learn. I didn't. I yeah. learned it from, from a guy who taught me running techniques, from guys who I used to hang out who are 50, 60 years of age and are running faster than some of our players who are internationals. Right. At 50, 60 years Well, I age. get that. My, my, I have a personal development coach yep. called Fred Gross, right? And I've spoken to you about yeah, yeah. Fred before. Great right. man, yeah. yeah. Great man. And Fred's always said to me, you know, that generally speaking, your attitude determines a lot of things. And a lot of people say that, yep. right? And aside from being one of the wisest men I've ever met, you know, one of the things I always credit Fred with, because people go, gee, you know, how come you were so lucky in, in relation to real estate, what made you fortunate in relation to being proficient in the game of selling houses, etc.? Yeah. And what I find with that is this: is that Fred taught me more about real estate than any other individual I've ever met. But he doesn't know anywhere near the amount about real estate as I do. Yes. So what he's done is he's taught me the life skills, and as my life skills, as my they evolved in my being, then I got better. So that's what you were saying then, to an extent. A hundred percent. Right. You okay. won't. You tend not to believe it. But, um, so you, you learn more about your art yep. that you want to be skillful at or proficient at, yes. generally from people that are non-related to the art form itself. And that is an amazing thing when you think about it. So it just shows that you really need to be, you need to have a kinship and you need to create a community of like-minded people that are not necessarily related to your own skill set, no. that have different life skill sets. Totally different life, life skill sets. And I find, I find that quite amazing. Because if I want to be a doctor, I should go learn from a doctor. That doctor should be able to teach me how to become a doctor. Absolutely. Uh, you should you be able to so. teach me yep. how, to, how to deal in real estate, whether it's commercial or whatever. You know, you, you walk into a house, you know exactly what's going on. I'm going to a coach, you should be able to teach me exactly what I need to know. But I believe coaching needs to change because all they're doing is micromanaging situations. They're not actually evolving and teaching the skill. 
So I was a big fan of Michael Jordan. Why was Michael Jordan one of the greatest? Because he kept on evolving. Yeah. And then you talk about the discipline. Well, he missed more goals than he scored. And he says that. You know, yeah. if, you, if you have a look at some of those Michael Jordan tapes, he actually says in there, I missed more goals than I scored, and I scored more goals than anybody else. What does that mean? Wayne, Gres- Wayne Gretzky, the yeah. famous hockey player, said yeah. you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's right. Right? Michael Jordan is the epitome of that. He took many shots to make sure that he got the most in. Well, so for, that's what you're saying. 100%. Yeah. Well, in, in our game, just to relate it, these days they don't hardly practice any shooting. Right. It's incredible. An amazing, with a goal-scoring game. It's that's, incredible. Yeah. Incredible. That they don't practice it because now all of a sudden we've got people saying that if you hit more than 30 shots that you're going to overload the body. I've got 10, 11-year-old kids hitting 500 balls in a session. Yeah. Can you imagine a tennis player hitting 50 balls? <laughs> you wouldn't know? Happen. Yeah. It wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. So that, that shift has to change where, no, the kid has to know, no, I'm working on this specific area and I've got the results for it. A lot of people will never deny, and we're taking this video and people are going to actually physically watch it. Yeah. What they take from it is up to them. But some people are going to go, wow, that's what I needed. Well, what I've got so far from you is yep. this, is that in any business... And well, let's say sport is a business, yep. right? Because that's really what it is today, yep. right? That we need to be results driven. So therefore, what we need to do is we need to look at the end game. What's the end game? If the end game is scoring more points than your opposition team, yep. how do we get to that point? In business, it is how do we, say for instance in real estate, how do we sell an, uh, an extraordinary amount of houses? We need to be proficient. We need to know about building. We need to know about selling skills. We need to know about cultural diversity. We need, yep. There's a whole range of things we need to know. So therefore, on that score, when we're results driven, we need to be able to look at the goal and go, our goal is this, and we need to get a result in that form. So how do we get to that point? So what you're saying, to, to clarify that, yep. is, is that A, we need to make sure that we learn the skill sets yep. to get to that point. We need to make sure we've got the people as important. The right the, people. The right people helping yeah. us, yes. right, and not get, telling us what we want to hear. Because we do seem to be in a environment today where political correctness has gone mad, yeah. right? The other thing, too, is that we're scared of telling kids that they can improve and they're not doing good enough right now. We tend to watch our P's and Q's a bit. I, when I was brought up, it wasn't so... My, my dad had sort of give me, you know a touch on the, touch on the yeah. shoulder or whatever and go, Michael, you can do better than that. That's really not good enough, yeah. right? We don't tend to do that as much today. No. So I don't know whether we're morally coddling people a lot, but if we want to be results driven, and you were brought up in a pretty hard environment, yeah. like, you know, you, you love your dad and all that sort of stuff, yeah. but your dad was firm. Yeah, very yeah, firm. And yeah. Being yeah. your number one fan, but he was firm, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. So therefore, you know, there's a lot to be said about having endeavour, but making sure that the right people are around you. So that's just as important, isn't it? Well, it's very important, but parents can understand that because they tell their children something and it's hard love. Yeah. Right? So when they come to me, I'm explaining to them that they need to be able to do A, B, and C, and they can't do it. And I explain to them, I'm not upset with them. I'm not going to tell them what they need to hear or what they want to hear. I'm trying to improve them. When someone's firm with you, they actually care for you. Yes. That's a total flip. Not everyone gets that, though. They don't get it. They don't get yeah, it. But really, otherwise, I wouldn't be wasting my time. i just move on to the next person. Yeah. I actually really care that you do this. You don't understand it now because the younger generation, I'm teaching them how to do perform a particular skill. They don't understand why they're doing it. They're thinking, this is boring. I want to get to the game. I want to have a sponsorship with Nike, and I want to play for Real Madrid. Yeah. Good luck. You'll never do it. Everyone's trying to get to the top, and there's no foundation. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in real estate when you're building a house. No foundation, the yeah. house falls down. That's right. So we understand that. And what I'm explaining to them is that I'm taking the holistic approach right from A up until Z. Well, what you're looking at yep. is you're looking at how do we achieve the results? Yes. What does it take to get us to that result point? That's right. Right. So therefore, we can, we'll can we'll call result another, word that I, another couple of words that I like, end game. Yep. I love those two words. When I'm talking to people, I say, what's the end game? Yeah. What do you want out of this particular situation? Yeah. Where, where do you want to be tomorrow? Do to, does, does tomorrow mean that you need to evolve today a bit more and you need to learn a bit more? That's important. So yeah. therefore, when we talk about hard love and we talk about you know, getting Johnny or Mary or whoever it yeah. might be on the right track, right? 
I think what I've learned, and even from my associations with McGraw Real Estate here in Melbourne now, who have yep. come down from Sydney now and are now taking off, right? I say to them, we need to make sure that we're respected before we're liked. Yes, exactly. Because when you're respected, yep. people will generally listen and they generally learn better. But we, we tend to worry about being liked yep. more than being respected. And I don't know whether that's good. I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. And respect should, is earned, not given. And mm. that, that, that mantra carries with me well. But generally speaking, you know, and say, for instance, a little boy comes to you who's 10 years old. Yeah. Right. His dad's told him about you. They've looked at you on YouTube. Yeah. So the respect is earned from all the things that you've done in the past. Yeah. So therefore, it's easier to teach them. So no different to when you met my son, Jacob. Yeah. Right. When you met him on that 40 degree day. Remember that story we, we yeah, tell? Yeah, of course. Yeah, right, we met him on that yeah. 40 degree day. He, he was lying in bed. He, he, he was getting over having some um, uh, injections from school. Yeah. Immunisation injections. And he wasn't feeling well. Well, it was 41 degrees that day when we first met you. Yeah. Right. And I remember saying to Jacob, well, this is really, this will make or break you. This won't make or break you for soccer. This will make or break you for life. Yeah. You can either get out of bed feeling sick because we've booked this special coach in for you, which was the first time he was meeting you, yeah. or not. He got out of bed and went. Now, he's driven in a whole lot of other areas other than soccer. Yeah. Right and doing really well, and I still record that that event was the one event that made him because he was feeling terrible. He got out of bed on a stinking hot day, and you drove him hard. And I remember the first 15, 20 minutes that he trained with you, he said, "Oh, what am I doing here, Dad?" And at the end of that hour and a half session in the heat, yeah. he didn't want to go. Yeah, yeah, right. So because he could see that in that period of that very short period of time that he had evolved, he'd already started learning a few skill sets that he'd never known beforehand. And sometimes that's the driving factor with people. And you've been able to depart that on obviously a lot of children, yeah. right? And also a lot of adults. So, but your consistency with that effort is impressive because you still, you have to go over some of the same basics with a myriad of different people. So how do you keep yourself enthralled? What keeps you enthusiastic with that? Is it always just the results? No, it's not only the results, it's because sometimes I'm doing exactly the same thing, and then I add a bit of salt and I add a bit of pepper. Okay, all right. You change it up a bit. It, and not that I change it up. I just figure out one little other way to tweak it to make it a little bit better, and I go, wow, that's going to help. Okay, good. Oh, and, that's good. That's and, good. And yeah. so I, I'm, I'm actually, people come to you as the expert. A lot of people don't understand. To become a master at something, master in, in art forms like karate and that, the masters are like 70, 80 years of age. Yeah. They've been doing it for 50, 60 years. I'm 44. You've got to wait until I'm around 50 or 60. What's going to be happening? It's going to be totally different. Right. So you're still evolving. Still evolving because yep. changing, tweaking things. Yeah. And what happens with kids or even adults, it doesn't matter. I think people should start liking themselves more before they start like getting other people to want them to like them. Yeah. Okay. Like who that. you are. Yeah. And then other people are going to like you anyway. I don't care if they don't like me or love me. But they're going to come to me. You know why? Because they go, I tell them to go. because they respect you. Because they respect what you can do. Go yeah, and do whatever that. you want. They'll end up coming back. Yeah. Because what's next? The great teacher always knows what's next. Yeah. They, good saying, that. Eh? The yeah. great teacher always knows what's next. Always. Great saying. Yeah. That's and, good. I have to write that one down. That's yeah. a good one. And you so, want to write that down, folks? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. So it, it, look, I, and just by talking to you, and I like your one-liners too, I'm passionately driven because I believe it doesn't matter whether it's Australia or overseas, everyone needs the skill set, but there's no curriculum or syllabus for technique. There is none. It's just he can or he she can, and we sift through it and we go, oh, he's good, and he, I'll take him. So we're not talking about $1 million here or $2 million. We're talking about a player who just got sold for $100 million to Manchester United. Yeah. Why would I, this is my opinion, Everyone's like, why would I be paying $100 million for someone who's not executing or delivering me the results? So if you're paying someone in your, in your industry $100 million, he'd be, be better be turning over something like a billion dollars for you. Yeah. Otherwise, what's, what's the investment for? Yeah. And sometimes in football... You're talking about cost versus benefit now. Of course. Yeah. But you go to business, right? Why am I paying that player for? And I think football's gone a little bit mad because... They haven't got the chemistry right. You have to know your business inside out. Why am I... I pay it for Messi. I pay it for Ronaldo. Those guys score 50 goals. It's, it's insane what they do. And all we get is this diverse thing of who's better. Mate, they're both great. 
forget about. Yeah. They're so great. It's in, You go onto that field and try and challenge them, and then you see how difficult it is. Yeah. Right? But to become good or to be good or to be great, like what you say to me, is a total difference. You want to be great? The good the, between the difference between good and great. Good and great. Right, is, is that that extra amount of effort and consistency. So if we if yep. we hone that in, right, we say the difference between good and great yep. is consistent effort. Yes. Right? A mantra that I can do it and I am worthy. Yes. Right? Or and also an attitude that what we want is we want to be able to succeed and benefit everyone else around us. A hundred percent. I want everyone to benefit. Yeah. They think they're coming to me because I want their job. You're talking about people being scared. Yeah. I don't want your job. I got my own job. Yeah. But what I'm trying to tell you is that if you do what I'm telling you to do, you're only going to grow and become better. And then you're going to tell me, oh, what's next? Well, the, the other thing with that is that means that then too that everyone needs a mentor or a coach of some sort. Of and it's not necessarily anyone you have to pay. You might find that you'll get someone that will that is in your life that is so wise that just adds a different skill set. You know, I've been blessed to be doc- with, I've been with Dr. Fred now 24 years. Yeah, long time. A long time. Yeah. And when I first met Fred, I, I was, to be honest, a little bit anti and very cynical, Yes. right? Because he came to me one day and he said to me, he goes, I'm going to teach you, Michael, that you can make more money working less hours. And I went, I'm working in real, real estate. Then and I was doing okay. I went, oh, yeah. that's rubbish. Yeah. I don't believe that. That's just absolute rubbish, right? And then I went to a couple of his other sessions. After about the third or fourth session, I was that smitten. I thought, this guy's really got into my head now. I'm actually believing what he's saying. So when I say that he taught me more about real estate than anyone else, that's true, yeah. right? But the reality of it is it's in these skill sets that, you know, that you make a community, you get people around you, you get some mentors, you get wise people around you, and therefore you can't help but being anything but wise. You know, and there's an old Italian saying that you are the equivalent of your three best friends. Yeah. That's true, and Fred taught me that. So that's where this community thing is important. So when we talk about, you know, your skill set, yeah. you know, and we talk about the respect thing, I get exactly where you're at. And I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm super impressed. And as I said at the start of this video, I'm super impressed that your tenacity with w- wanting to evolve is unique. I don't see a lot of people that have that tenacity always to want to benefit themselves. So well, congratulations, my friend. Thank you, but I'm yeah. not scared. Yeah, although that's... I'm not are. scared. I have fear like everyone else. Yeah. Everyone's fearful of something. Yeah. But since some people want to, like you say, they want to doubt themselves. Doubt's bad. Doubt kills. Doubt, doubt kills your spirit. Yeah, but and fear then, can motivate, though. Yeah. yeah. Fear, you keep on going, and then you don't know what's going to happen, but you're still going. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, everyone's got fear of continuing to go, but I'm not going to play second fiddle when I understand that we can make it better. And if I hurt someone's feelings, I don't really care. You know why? Because I actually care that the country or that or that kid, you're talking about children, well, I'm talking about adults or whatever it is, because I teach from a five-year-old different hats. Yep. I can teach a five-year-old kid who's beginning, yep. and I can teach a 12-year-old who's in the midst of it, and I can teach a 17-year-old who's getting ready to become an adult, and I can teach the professional. Yep, I've seen that. And yep. everyone needs help. Everyone. Tiger Woods doesn't matter if he was the world's best coach. He still had a swing coach yeah. when he was number one. Roger Federer Roger, still has a coach. Still still has a coach. Yeah. And so when you look at a 100-metre sprinter, because I have a lot of respect for sprinters and, and athletes on the track because they may be running the 100 metres 10.1 seconds. To take 0.1, 0.01 of a second off that time, Is it, uh, it's incredible the work that they have to do to get that. Yeah. And yep. someone says, what drives you? To get that, I have to bust my ass. Yeah. And it just takes a long, long time. And that's what I call great. Because those guys are pushing and pushing and pushing. And that's why they end up getting there. Like, If we can get that feeling and get everybody yep. that we know in our community to think like that and work on that 0.01 of a second improvement yep. in their life, what happens then? Everybody grows with that. So, mate, that was a good session. Thanks, Con. Thank you. Great. Thank you.